So at this point, you don't see any deviations on the screen. The computer is uh, applying tolerances internally to the piece parts, building it, checking that measurement. And then it's collecting that data uh, 2,000 times. Okay. And now we got the uh, table view of all the results in one go. So the benefit of having the table view here is you can uh, see all the measurement results in one single uh, display page. So. so from so from here we're talking about one measurement but you can see this model has five measurements and you can have unlimited measurements and scroll up and down but the uh you know the power is this gives you your first view of the data so that you can kind of get a global view yeah so the angle uh between the bars are is the measurement that we're gonna check here and if you want to see the graph view of this measurement, you can just simply double click and that will pull up the uh, graph view for that measurement. So now we got the measurement results for this particular assembly process that we did. So I'm just going to have this set aside. Okay, can you, so before you do that, Priya, mm -hmm. um, from this table view, if you look down on the far right where it has the graph, this is an easy way to scan through all your parts and see which ones are close to uh, being out of spec or out of spec and so obviously the third measurement which is the angle measurement but if, if we didn't know we wanted to look at that angle measurement the graph on the right would say well that's the one that's the farthest out of spec that would drive us to double click that measurement and drill deeper into the results and then if you go to that results before you jump to another model then this is you know this results is telling you the nominal angle the min and max angle, the range of the angle variation, and the causes of variation at the bottom. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep this result aside. And this result is for one particular assembly process that we did. So now I'm gonna introduce you to another function called model variance inside 3DCS. So the main purpose of having this model variance is a user can go ahead and create multiple model process for one same model and save it along with it. So this model have three different process that I've used to build it. So and you can see how I've used only the moves to create these model variants. So I'm just gonna around um, purposely active deactive few moves which will actually uh, turn on my variants and that variant will be the model process that will be applied to the model here. So the first model process is what we so, so far, I'm going to activate the second one, which is the model variant 2. And when I did that, you can see how automatically few moves got active and deactive in the move list. So this is just turning on a few moves, which says the process 2 here, and it had deactivated the initial moves. So now I have the process 2 selected. So before I show what's the process 2, uh, let me give a short explanation of what's the difference between the process 1 and process 2 here. The first assembly process, we built this plate and bar to a fixture tool in a sub-assembly and we directly attached it to the spine bar. Whereas in the process 2, we have an additional fixture tool in the top level assembly. Uh, I can show you that. You can see that's highlighted here. So the plate and the bar first gets assembled in the sub-assembly and now when it comes to the spine bar, it takes this fixture as an additional information and place it there. So the main purpose of having this fixture tool is to locate the rod position, the rod height when it gets aligned to the spine bar. So if I jump in, so the first process, the, uh, the rods were just bolted on and the tip of the rod was a function of how well the hole pattern was set when we bolted it on. The second process, that pattern move that we refer to is now deactivated because uh, now we are simulating bolting through some clearance holes that are not controlling the location of the rod and we're setting the height of the rod. So the power is with one model we can analyze multiple design assembly processes as well as multiple tolerances on different parts. You know, if we want to test tolerances from multiple suppliers or test different build processes, that can all be done in uh, one single model. Yeah, 
So now I have the second process active. Let me go ahead and animate and walk through through the moves. So the first move will be the same thing, attaching the plate to the fixture tool, followed by the rod on both sides. And then comes the process to move where we have this additional fixture tool here. So that would be the next move, which I'm sorry, the spine rod and then followed by the fixture tool. Yeah. And you can, when you see this, the other side, you should notice the tool adjusting the length of the rod position. There you go. So that's the difference in the process too. And the rest of the moves goes the same. Here. So now I build this model using the process too, where I do, I did only changes to the move uh, pattern, but there's no changes in the part level tolerances. So I'm using the same tolerance in the model. So now if at this stage, if I go ahead and run a simulation again for this particular process here. So this simulation is for the second process that we just made, and it's going to pull up the results for that. And once the results are up, we can compare the results between the process one and process two. And from that, a user can um, see which process is most suitable for the assembly. And we can uh, take that results into consideration. So now this, this is up, I'm gonna pull this again back here. The measurement that we had to uh, look into is the angle between the bars. And you can see how the spec limits are a little bad in the first process, whereas in the second process, the, the results are much better when compared comparatively. So this is an example of you can improve your process by adding tooling. Of course, that's a capital investment and it may increase the assembly time because that's different than just sticking the rod up and running two bolts. So now you can do some decision making. You know, do we want to invest in tooling? Do we want to slow our assembly process down? What's the dimensional quality that we want? The goal here though is, are there alternatives to just tightening and loosening tolerances? Exactly.